Hey, Brian. Hey, David. How you doing? Doing great. All yeah. right. Welcome to Starfire. Hey, you know what? Let's learn about microwaves today, okay? Let's do it. Maybe make a plasma? Absolutely. Go. I'd like to introduce you to my great friend and business partner, Brian Jerzyk. He is the founder and president of Starfire Industries. Brian, what does Starfire do? Starfire is a company. We do work in plasma sources and nuclear technologies. So our company uh, is, surrounds everything it does with plasma technologies. So we do uh, neutron generators with nuclear fusion, which David, you love. Yep, absolutely. All right. Uh, in this case, what we make are electric devices that can accelerate hot plasma into a target to do nuclear fusion to knock neutrons out of a nucleus so someone can use it for an industrial process. So Just like the sun. Well, the sun is fantastic. It's free energy. It just uh -huh. sits there in space and makes a lot, of, a lot of happy plasma and neutrons. But here on Earth, the typical way to do it would be to get radioactive materials from a nuclear reactor. And a lot of people don't like carrying around radioactive materials. So, so your system doesn't have any radioactivity. That's great. And we, we make electric light bulbs that you turn on. And instead of making light, they literally accelerate hot hydrogen into a target to make a fusion reaction and knock a neutron out. And we make devices that are small that you can handheld and carry. We make a device for Homeland Security so that you can go and look for people with dangerous objects or items because okay. you can literally make neutrons and they can uh, interrogate an object to find out if somebody's got something bad in their backpack or in their luggage, is there a bomb going onto a plane or things like that. We do work on that. We also make neutron generators that can go down in the ground uh, for oil and gas exploration. And in particular, if you've heard of fracking, and there's a lot of danger about, could my frack well be dangerous for me? And the answer is it's not. And we make a technology that can ensure that those wells are done safely and properly using neutrons, which is a nuclear technology. Wow, that is exciting. That is exciting. And you also make uh, electronics, like power supplies, like this one, right? Exactly. So this is a Starfire flagship product. It's called the Impulse. And what it does is it takes electrical energy from power supply. Let's say you just plug it into the wall. And this system will create very, very sharp and tailored pulses to a plasma sputter deposition system to put thin film coatings on objects. One of these days, you'll hear in this course how computer chips are made, and they use exactly things like the stuff Brian's talking about. So, Brian, we're here today to learn about microwave ovens. Do microwaves have anything to do with the, the work you do here? So, microwaves are used not just for ovens. Okay. Okay. They're also used yeah, for drying paint on automobiles. Wow. They're used for curing uh, plastics and, and other uh, items like uh, for, let's say, uh, plastic bottles or a part for your car or maybe okay. stuff on, on computer chips. So it turns out that microwave energy is also used in telecommunications and sending uh, electromagnetic signals over long distances from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. But what's also fascinating and what's relevant for our company is that we actually use microwave radiation to generate a plasma inside of small objects to then use to accelerate ions to either create nuclear fusion or to put down a thin film coating on surfaces to make surfaces hard. So the neutron source you were talking about, that plasma, you actually use the microwaves, like a microwave oven, to make that plasma. That's right. So we'll basically take the microwave oven magnetron, uh -huh. which I'm sure you're going to show your students Absolutely. In a bit, and what it does, it creates microwave energy, and we channel it in to create a plasma to make an ion beam to have nuclear fusion, so that way we can eliminate the need for radioactive materials for industrial technologies and, and sensing solutions. Yeah. So who knew? Microwave ovens, not just to warm your coffee. And you know what? We're going to show you how to make and use plasmas for a completely non-industrial process for just something fun. What I'd like to show you is how you can take your normal household products, a microwave oven, uh, a beer glass, and a grape and do a plasma experiment. All right, so here we've got our microwave oven. Let's see what's inside. Very important thing, unplug it. We've already taken off the screws. So we take the lid off, and uh, this whole part is just an empty metal box. All of the guts are right here. So let's follow the power cord. We take the power cord in, and the first thing, they've got uh, some filtering device here just to make sure they know what kind of power is going to the microelectronics. Then you follow these wires and you come to the control panel. So you have all these fancy controls here. Well, they really do something fairly simple. They turn it on and off. 
or at least they turn parts of it on and off. When you change the power in your microwave and say, I want 50% power, it does give you half the energy, but it does it by chopping out half of the time when the microwaves are on. You won't notice that because they actually go on and off 120 times a second. So it just takes part of that and makes it smaller. And of course, the thing that tells you be on for two minutes is again fairly simple. It's just timing. A fancy electronic clock. Once it's told to go on, it needs to take the voltage not from your 110 volts, but up to thousands of volts. And it does that with a transformer. We have a transformer and a capacitor. And if you ignore my advice and actually try this at home, this is the part that can kill you, so don't touch it. We transform the power into a higher voltage. And the magic of a microwave happens in this device right here. This is called the magnetron. You kind of get a sideways view of it there, too. Um, and in the magnetron, it has a cavity. And electrons are boiled off of a filament. So part of the power has to be able to heat this up and create the electrons. And then the electrons are rotated around. But there's these metal spines in there that bunch the electrons. And when you have flowing charge going in a curved path, it radiates. It creates electromagnetic radiation, light. And the size of this is designed to only radiate it in a band around 2.45 billion times per second. 2.45 gigahertz. The cavity, which is this square rectangular part, you might be able to see better up here, will only transmit that type of energy. And it is transmitted into this main body. And if you look inside, and you see this little layer right here, which probably we can even take off, right? Okay. Then you see where the microwaves get into the device. Microwave energy comes through there heats up your food, expands, and of course, because it's the moving back and forth of charge, it will move back and forth. Ever notice how when you, if you put in a piece of food and your rotation isn't working, parts of the food get cooked and others don't? That's because the cavity has hot spots, places where the electric field is higher. Therefore, it's exciting the water molecule up and down faster in some spots than other spots. This is very difficult. It's very difficult to design a cavity that gives you uniform radiation throughout of it. They solve that problem by adding a rotation system. So the one other part of this whole device is underneath here, if you took these screws off, just a simple electric motor that moves the turntable around. And that way, if there's any hot spot, it gets rotated around inside your food and you don't notice it. So what happens is that microwaves, okay, they are electromagnetic radiation. And when you have an object that is, let's say, electrically conductive, like grape juice has electrolytes in it. So that's why when you eat juice, it's good for you, right? Because it puts nutrients and electrolytes in your body, like Gatorade, all right? What happens is, is that inside the grape, there are all these electrolytes, which means they can conduct electricity. So the microwave oven supplies microwave energy and causes all the pluses and minuses to move back and forth. And if the, micro, if the grape is set up so that it's got two ends, what will happen is the energy will cause a standing wave pattern to happen inside. And when you have a dipole configuration, you'll have the two ends will go up and down in voltage. And right in the middle will be lots of current. Electrons will move back and forth really fast. So with the grape, when we take the grape and we cut the grape in half like this, we cut it in half and we put, it, we put it like this. The little tiny bit of skin between the grape is the channel where all the current goes through. So what happens is those electrons run back and forth, back and forth, and that little part in the middle gets so hot because it's tiny, it gets hot, it vaporizes. And as soon as it vaporizes, the microwave energy inside of here takes that gas that's coming off and a little bit of heat and spark to create a plasma. And then, whoop, 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 it dries. It's important when you're trying to actually do the grape plasma experiment 
to get the perfect grip. What we're trying to do is get a quarter wavelength between the two parts of the conductor, because that will then be an antenna, an antenna, so the electrons can race back and forth and then hopefully create a plasma. But here, uh, Brian, can you hold this for a minute? I can. I, I have to uh, make sure to illustrate what you should not do at home with my special shirt. I'll be right back. All right, N now I'm back. Now I have the proper attire. All right. So, ideally, uh, we will make this small bridge that is between the two halves of the grape, and that will get hot enough and be our wire to actually both vaporize the grape juice and then be the key part of our antenna. We're trying to maximize the power that goes to the microwave and the spot in a microwave oven that gets the most power should be right in the middle. So you take a grape, you cut it in half, you have to eat the half. Mmm, yummy grape. And then we take this part of the grape, but don't slice it all the way through. Okay? And then we're going to split that grape in half. Keep it connected. Yes. Very important. Little bow tie grape. Okay. We're going to put it there. We're going to try the lossy glass, I hope. Put it on there. There we go. Woo! Oh, we did it! A ball of grape plasma. Yay! Well, in the lab, you can see we got down to a certain part, but it would take a while to saw it in half. But if you took the real guts, the thing called the magnetron, that's inside the microwave oven, the thing that makes the microwaves, this is what you would see. And it doesn't look like much, but it's got this block of, of copper, and it's got some tubes, and this thing is all sealed in under vacuum. So let me take this part right here and cut it again through the middle. Now we understand the real inner workings of what makes microwaves. Microwaves is a kind of electromagnetic radiation. It's light. It's much lower energy, much lower frequency, longer wavelengths. It's not quite up to radio waves yet, but it's a longer wavelength than infrared radiation. It's made by having electrons go around in a circle. Something about like this. The electrons orbit like that because this thing right in the middle is a magnet. And the magnetic field will cause the electrons to orbit. You notice all of these bars, though, and these little plugs. This causes the electrons to bunch up as they're orbiting. A charged particle that moves in a circular arc will radiate energy by sizing the size of this cavity, by putting the right number of electrons into it, you can get the frequency that a microwave oven operates at. 2.45 gigahertz. Why this energy? It's because water will absorb it. Electromagnetic energy is like light. You can see through water. It doesn't absorb light in the visible spectrum at the visible frequencies. If I go up and up in frequency, I will reach a certain area, the microwave band, where water is not transparent, where the water absorbs this energy. So microwave ovens heat your food because they have water in it. They don't heat the plate you put in there because the plate doesn't have water in it. Whatever water molecules are around, they will absorb this frequency and plus or minus some other band of this general frequency. And if it absorbs that energy, that means it vibrates faster. And if it vibrates faster, that's what we think of as heat. 
That's why a microwave oven will heat your food. And the magnetron that's inside of it is how it generates the microwaves. That's what you need to know about how a microwave oven works.